Hey guys, it's Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, ResetCharters.com. This is my 2018 Sea-Doo GTX 300 Limited. It is a beast. And uh, I had it out today. I finally have six hours on it, so all the power is unlocked. Pretty excited about that. What I'm doing right now is I literally just pulled it home from, from, uh, having it out for the day and it's time to clean it all up first thing i want to show you guys is the system that oh, oops so this piece here lo locks and that one locks lifts the whole thing up which is pretty awesome um, when i fuel it up I just want to make a note this is where the uh, fuel filler cap is when I fill it up I always undo the fuel cap I lay it just like that and I take this microfiber towel just in case there's any issues with the uh, finish on this particular model which I don't think there is I did a lot of research before I purchased it uh, on build dates and whatnot this uh, was built June 19th of this year, so it's a later production model, which uh, some of the earlier models had some uh, issues with the uh, gel coat uh, and then the acrylic they put over it. Uh, this one shouldn't have that issue, but either way, there's no reason to spill gas on any kind of finish, because it, you know, it's always negative, not necessarily a sea-do thing. But uh, I put this, uh, microfiber towel right here just like this and then I stick the nozzle in there and fill her up nothing complicated but I definitely like to keep this towel sitting here I generally don't get fuel on the towel and I know somebody's gonna say oh well isn't that a fire hazard or whatever well I don't make it a habit to overflow or whatever I pay a lot of attention to what I put in there and I pay a lot of attention to you know the care um, that I put into fueling this thing up so anyway i keep the towel there i guess it could be a fuel issue but or i'm sorry it could be a fire hazard but if that were the case i literally would just uh you know soak it with water and rinse it out and let it dry uh over the day in the sun but anyway that's what i do there um as far as uh the unit goes itself uh the first order of business is the hose i always like to flush it out flush the engine out first so sea do says that you should start the engine and then after you start the engine and let it run i have to find the key it's probably on my life vest yes it is um <clears throat> They say that you should they say that you should start it up. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'll try to do this as easy as I can. I twist it backwards several times because it makes it easier to screw it in. So twist it backwards, then I put it in. You don't want to cross thread it, but then when you thread it in, after you twisted it backwards, it goes it goes in there pretty evenly. So you get in there pretty tight. Then you want to put the key in and start it up. All right, she's running. All right, now we're gonna go over real fast. We're gonna turn the water on. And we're going to let the water run through it. that run for I don't know 20 30 seconds nothing fancy the reality is 
I like to taste it. No salt in that. So at that point, I'm cool with it. I know that probably wasn't too, too long. It makes me feel okay. I've been doing this for about 15 years, so not my first rodeo. So I turned the water off. Okay. Let it do its thing, run through. Give it a couple of rips. And then I pull the key. And that is how I clean the engine out. Now, I'm gonna undo the hose. It's not complicated. Everybody has their own process. I let the water run in it until the water doesn't taste salty and then I give it a few more seconds and that's it. That's all I'm trying to do is get the salt out of the engine area and that's it. So now I'm going to put a sprayer nozzle on the hose just like so and go back over Turn the water back on. I mean, this is not rocket science, guys. I was just showing you how I do it. I'm not necessarily looking for your tips or your tricks or your input, per se, because I've never had an issue with this, ever. Like I said, I've owned at least 15 skis. I currently own nine skis. I'm kind of a... Uh, jet ski junkie or personal watercraft junkie if you will so I just spray everything out real good spray everything off really well get all the salt off now I'm gonna do this section of the video and I'm just gonna let you know this is not the end-all be-all video I'm gonna go ahead and just get all the salt off of it for tonight and tomorrow, tomorrow morning first thing, I'm gonna give it a real detail. I like to clean my trailer really well, get all the salt off the trailer. I actually pulled out of fresh water today, so I'm not real worried about what salt was actually in the motor. I was just going through the motion, showing you guys how I do it. Um, I actually, Went through probably, I don't know, six miles of fresh water before I ever pulled the thing out of the water today. So I'm not, I'm not worried that there's salt in the motor. Um, it's more of a concern that the salt is, you know, all over the ski from being out all day. But even then, shouldn't be bad. But I'm just going to give it a good rinse. That's what I do before I put it away every single time I take it out. Rinse all my gear here. Alright, so just rinsing it down. Again, I'm going to do a full on detail and a video tomorrow just because it's Monday. But I wanted to show you guys how I get it cleaned up after I ride. But literally that's all I do is uh, run water through the motor and hose the exterior down really well. Um, I'll touch it to make sure I don't feel any salt. But you can see, look at the beading. Um, I put a quick coat of my brand new Marine hybrid spray coating on there. Just a real quick wipe down, nothing fancy, not a full detail or anything, which I'm, I am going to do tomorrow. On a video for you guys but anyway that's what that's about um, I also since his uh, foot wells are so deep I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a cup to scoop everything out of there and get that puddle of water out I don't like that sitting in there and you know there's salt in there especially because the foot wells are so deep so I'm gonna scoop all that out 
Um, again, I'm not real worried about it. Uh, the seat, another thing I will do is I'm going to pull the seat off real quick and scoot that back there. Scoot that back there. Not a whole lot of access on this one. Now look, I have a brand new product called Salt Barrier and this ski has almost seven hours on it now and this is the fourth time that I will have rinsed it off. I applied my salt barrier before I took it out the first time. You can see that stuff is still on there. It is all over everything. Salt Barrier is a anti-corrosive, multi-purpose lubricant that pushes water out of its way and it basically prevents salt from getting on anything that the salt barrier is on. So the salt can't penetrate it. Um, in fact, it breaks the salt down if it tries and it pushes the salt and the water out of the way when you spray it on. Um, it's always best to spray it on a clean engine first, a, a clean dry engine. However, uh, if you had to spray it on a damp engine, it would definitely do a great job. I would always recommend a dry engine for the first application. Um, get it in every nook and cranny that you can. But anyway, my point to all of this is that this has been rinsed four times already. This is about to be the fifth time and you can see that it's still all over it. So salt barrier works. I mean, it lasts four to six times the leading product. Oh, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, I usually recommend not using a spray nozzle, but since I'm showing you guys what I do, I'll go ahead and I'll spray everything down really well, get all up in there, all around the side, everywhere and anywhere I can get. I'm going to do a more thorough job in the morning of cleaning the engine bay, the hull, and that kind of thing out. But for right now, I'm just going to give it a solid once over. I'm not worried that I got anything in the engine bay because um, it was all sealed up. The other cool part is um, I didn't take the plugs out. I will do that right now. But this is my procedure. This is what I do when I pull a ski out of the water man look at those beads that was just a quick wipe wipe down no prep nothing i literally just wiped it down before i put it in the water the other day with the uh hybrid spray coating with the uh, ceramic acrylics technology that's a hybrid technology that's ceramic and acrylic working together which nobody else has that detailjuice.com we are the only people who are running the ceramic acrylics in fact, that's a trademark term. I own it. So that's what's going on with that. Rinsed it out. You can still see that the product is still on there. That's the fifth rinse. Uh, again, I'm not done, but the top is definitely rinsed clean. So that's what's up with that. Sorry for the uh, fog on the uh, lens there. Anyway, this has been Gary Dean with DetailJuice.com. This is my 2018 GTX 300 Limited. Finally got all the power to this thing today. It is amazing. Oh my goodness, it's fast. Uh, more than happy with the comfort. The stereo system is amazing. I mean, I could not possibly be happier with this. I own Yamaha and Sea-Doo as part of my fleet for reset charters. Uh, where we do jet ski tours. Um, we do not do rentals. It is only tours, which is better for you and for me, trust me. Um, but this particular ski is my personal ski. And you can see just a quick wipe down got tremendous results. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Super happy with that. But Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown on how I clean my skis up when I pull them out of the water. I am going to do a full detail on this tomorrow with uh, a real soap, clean it up really well, and then I'm going to coat it properly. Um, and then I'll hit it with the uh, salt barrier all over the engine bay. But for right now, this is how I clean them up. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys got questions for me or want to know more about my products, 813-846-4406 is my cell. 
Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.